All right, today I'm going to show you how you can get every single quadratic equation question right on the SAT. So the first thing is to make sure to understand the fundamentals for the quadratic equations. I'm just going to go over everything you need to know, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it or add fluff. So let's start. So a quadratic equation is going to be an equation that's in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. You'll notice that it's different than a linear equation because you have the x squared. So when you see the x squared, you know it's going to be a quadratic equation. So the a is in front of the x squared, the b is whatever's in front of the x, and the c is whatever's left over. That's what we define it as. So it's going to look like this, or it's going to look it's going to look like this. You'll know if it's if if it looks like this if a is greater than zero and it looks like that if a is less than zero so you look at whatever's in front of the x squared that's the a if it's greater than zero it's going to look like this you can know because it's smiling and if it's less than zero it'll look like that because it's frowning it's negative it's unhappy okay so then if you have a quadratic equation and let's just understand the different pieces of it let's say it looks something like this Okay, so let's understand the different parts of the quadratic equation. This part right here, so this is the x, this is the y. This right here is the y-intercept. How do you get the y-intercept? You have to plug in x to be 0. So when x is 0, that's how you get the y-intercept. It actually makes sense because... This y-intercept is where it intersects the y-axis, and the y-axis is where x is 0. So you plug in 0 for x, and you get the y-intercept. If you notice this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, if I plug in x for 0, then I'm just going to get c, and that's going to be the y-intercept. So y-intercept, you, you plug in plug in 0 for x. Okay, great. This point right here. This point right here is called the vertex the vertex. That's the maximum. So how do you get the vertex? The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. So that's going to be the x-coordinate of the vertex. Then you might ask yourself, well, what's the y-coordinate? Well, once you get the x-coordinate, just plug it into the equation and you get the y-coordinate. Okay, let's talk about these two points right here. These right here are the x-intercept. The x-intercept is when y is 0. So you plug in y of 0, and you get the x-intercepts. So I have 0, let's say 0 equals um, x squared plus x minus 6. OK, and I want to solve because I want to get the, the y-intercept. So I can either do it two ways. One way is I can factor. And the other is I could use a quadratic equation. Factoring, and I'm going to teach you how to factor very, um, very quickly, there's the big X method, where if I have just a 1 in front of the X squared, which is generally what it's going to be the case on the SAT, you can take this negative 6, you could put it here, and you could take the, um, the, C, the, the B value, which is a 1, and put it here. So then what you're looking for is you're looking for of values that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1. So what multiplies to negative 6? Let's think 3 and 2. OK, and adds to 1. So positive 3 and negative 2. So now you just factored it. This is x plus 3, x minus 2. And now you just factored it. So now you know the solutions are x is equal to negative 3, x is equal to 2. And that's going to be the, um, the x-intercepts. Perfect. The other way to do it is to use a quadratic formula, right? You always, you learned it in school and you had to memorize it. It's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, so you can do it that way, but it seems a little bit cumbersome. The better way to do it is to factor it. And, um, and the last thing I want to uh, mentioned to you, fundamental-wise, is this b squared minus 4ac. That is very important because that'll dictate if that's greater than zero, you're going to have two solutions. If that's equal to zero, you're going to have one solution. If that's less than zero, you're going to have no solutions. 
or two non-real solutions. So if you have a question on the SAT that asks you, okay, how many solutions will there be? Well, all you have to do is do B squared minus 4AC and see if it's greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero. All right, that's the fundamentals in a nutshell. Now let's actually go to actual problems from the SAT and let's see how this, how this gets tested. So SAT number one, let's look at this question. From which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the xy plane above from which the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as constants in the equation? Okay, so what are they asking for? They're asking for the coordinates of vertex A. Well, how do we get the vertex? The vertex, we just learned, the x-coordinate is negative b over 2a. So whenever you see vertex, you always think negative b over 2a. So this is x squared minus 2x minus 15. So a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 15. So negative b is negative negative 2 over 2 times 1. So that's just 2 over 2, which is just 1. So the x-coordinate is 1. And then the y-coordinate, you just plug it in here. You just plug the 1 into the equation, and you get y is equal to 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 15. And that gives you 1 minus 2 minus 15. So that'll give you minus 16. So the vertex is going to be 1 comma minus 16. And then they're asking for which equation shows these uh, this vertex. So there's really only one equation here with a 1 minus 16, and that's D, and that's the answer. A lot of students get this question wrong, and we might ask ourselves, well, why is why are all these students getting these questions get getting this question wrong? Don't they know that they're they're looking for the vertex? Even if students know how to get the vertex, they still get this question wrong. Because what happens is students look at this question, they don't really read this, and immediately they go and they factor. Because in school they just immediately factor. Remember, we talked about the big X method, minus 15 on the top minus two on the bottom. What multiplies to minus 15, what multiplies to minus 15 and adds to minus two? Well, 15 would be five and three. So negative five, positive three. So then it would be X minus five, X plus three. And that, you know, people would answer B. And that's true, that does factor it, but it's not answering the question. So we always wanna make sure that we answer the question. All right, let's move on to another SAT, SAT number three, and let's look at number 12. In the quadratic equation above, A is a non-zero constant. The graph of the equation in the XY plane is a parabola with vertex C comma D, which of the following is equal to D? So this looks also like a tough problem, but we know how do you get the vertex of any quadratic equation? It's negative B over 2A. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. They're asking for the y-coordinate of the vertex because they're saying x-coordinate is c, y-coordinate is d. So they're asking for the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's do that. This equation is not in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. It's in another form. So we can just expand it. So y is equal to a um, x minus 2 times x plus 4. Let's expand it. And that gives me x squared, right? You're foiling it, x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 8. So this becomes a times what? x squared plus 2x minus 8. So this is ax squared plus 2ax minus 8a. So the vertex, vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Here, b is 2a, which is a little bit confusing. So that's negative 2a over 2 times the a value, which just so happens to be a, is 2a. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1. That's great. So now they're looking for the y-coordinate of the vertex. So now just plug it into the equation. You could plug it into any equation, the expanded one or not expanded one, it doesn't matter. So this is y is equal to negative 1 minus 2, negative 1 plus 4, and don't forget that's multiplied by a. So negative 1 minus 2 is 
negative 3. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So then this is just negative 9a. And that's it. So the, the vertex, the x-coordinate the vertex is negative 1. And the y-coordinate is negative 9a. And that's the answer. So really, this is exactly what we talked about. We're just looking for the vertex. They make it more complicated than it really needs to be. Let's look at another equation here. Um, 2x squared minus 4x equals t. In the equation above, t is a constant if the equation has no real solutions. So they're saying there's no real solutions. Which of the following could be the value of t? Well, now this is a quadratic equation. So whenever I see a quadratic equation, I always want to make it in the form that we know. So that's 2x squared minus 4x minus t equals 0. I know this is A, this is B, this is C. So they're saying it has no real solutions. Well, what did we learn? We said B squared minus 4AC. If that's greater than 0, I have two solutions. If that's equal to 0, I'll have one solution. And if that's less than 0, I'm going to have no solutions. Remember? We just did it. <laughs> so all I have to do is b squared minus 4ac and see which one's going to be negative. So b is negative 4. So negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is minus t. And that's going to have to be less than 0. So negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 4 times 2 times minus t is plus 8t is less than 0. So eight, 16 plus 8t has to be less than 0. Let's see. Um, 3 can't work, because that would be greater than 0. 1 would be 16 plus 8. That won't work. Negative 1 would be 16 minus 8 would be 8 would be still positive, wouldn't be less than 0. So the answer has to be a, which is negative 3. 16 plus 8 times negative 3. 8 times negative 3 would be a much bigger negative number, and that would turn the whole thing negative. So that's the answer. I know these are complicated problems, but hopefully now that you understand these fundamental concepts, you'll be able to pick up on these clues in each one of the questions. And it really boils down to what we just talked about. All right, let's move on to another question. And right here, number 30. The scatter plot shown below shows the amount of electric energy generated by nuclear sources over a 10 year period. Of the following equations, which best models the data in the scatter plot? So if these answer choices are all quadratic equations, so which best models it? So it looks something like this. Does it look happy or does it look sad? Well, it has a frowny face. So we know that A has to be less than zero. So it can't be A and it can't be C, right? Because those are all happy face positive. The other thing to look at is what else do we see? Well, we see the vertex here, but that seems a little bit too complicated. What's the simplest thing? The simplest thing is the um, the um, the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is 0. So when x is 0, y is going to be about 760. For b, the y-intercept is negative 745. That can't be, right? For d, it's 745. Well, it's closer to 745 than negative 745, and that's actually the answer. So just use what we learned from the quadratic equation in order to get these um, these questions right. Lastly, um, let's look at question number 24. The function above models the height h and feet of an object above ground t seconds after it's being launched straight up in the air. What does the number 72 represent in the function? So this right here is 72. So we just talked about this. 72 would be the, um, uh, the y-intercept. So when x is 0, y is 72. So when in this case, when t is 0, h is 72. T is seconds. So when the seconds is zero, the height is 72. So what's the second zeros? Well, when it's zero seconds, meaning it's initial. So it's the initial height in feet of the object. All right, hopefully this was helpful for you. And I really do appreciate all of your support. And um, this is the reason why I'm making these videos. So please like and subscribe. And um, we'll continue making videos like this.